You got one part of that wrong. This is not meth. Now that you've seen one example, let's move into the chemistry behind Breaking Bad. Or chemistry as seen in Breaking Bad. To begin, let's look at what Walter just threw on the ground, which was fulminated mercury, or mercury 2 fulminate. Um, mercury 2 fulminate's um, chemical compound is just AgCON2, and it's a white powder that explodes due to the formation of mercury vapors and it reacts due to impact, friction, or heat. This is the full reaction of fulminated mercury. Um, mercury and CON2 react to decompose into CO, N2, and Hg, which is mercury. CO is a gas, N2 as a gas, and then mercury as a liquid. This reaction is a decomposition of mercury to fulminate which is where it breaks down. As you can see, the mercury fulminate breaks down into the two gases and mercury as a liquid. Um, it can begin at temperatures as low as 100 degrees Celsius, though it proceeds at much higher rates when increasing the temperature. Now let's move on to a quick history of mercury fulminate. Um, mercury fulminate was first discovered in 1800s by Isaac Howard. However, interestingly enough, investigations carried out by Leinberg, Gay Lussac, and Huller um, on silver fulminate and silver cyanide led to the discovery of isomers. Huller later recognized the structure of fulminate ionine, CON, the crystallite structure of fulminate mercury was not later explained until 2007. Now let's see what was it used for. Um, fulminated mercury in the 19th century was used as an initiator for detonating uh, dynamite. However, due to its toxic nature and the difficulties of handling it, it was soon replaced by safer lead uh, ion. Walter, therefore, had it took a huge risk when he marched into Tuco's office, just like um, prancing around with a, a whole kilo of fulminated mercury and due to its explosive nature, it could have gone off at any time. So it was just a miracle that um, it didn't go off while he was parading around with it. And it only exploded when Walter took the throw. Now let's see one more example of chemistry as seen in Breaking Bad. I'm sorry, what were you asking me? Oh, yes. That stupid plastic container I asked you to buy. You see, hydrofluoric acid won't eat through plastic. It will, however, dissolve metal, rock, glass, ceramic. So there's that. Now let's look at how this stuff was able to dissolve the body and the chemistry behind it. As you can see, what Walter was using is known as hydrofluoric acid or hydrogen fluoride and is a mix of one hydrogen atom and one fluorine atom. The reaction shown is a is as the hydro hydrofluoric acid is mixed with silicone dioxide as a solid to make both silicone tetrafluoride as a gas and water as a liquid. This is the full reaction as an equation this reaction is an acid base reaction however it is also a double replacement reaction where two of the reaction compounds swap bonds to create pro products 
with comparable bound connections. Now let's move on to a quick history of hydrofluoric acid and what it's used for today. In 1771, Carl Wilhelm Schellen made the first batch of hydrofluoric acid by disdain fluor spare, a mineral form of calcium fluoride with sulfuric acid in a retort. Schellen noticed that the process produced corrosive flames in that a white crust formed on the surface of the water in the receiver. He also prepared several fluorides or salts of hydrofluoric acid and recognized its strong corrosive properties. Today, the main method to make hydrofluoric acid is treating the mineral fluoride as at a temperature of 265 degrees Celsius with strong sulfuric acid. Now let's move on. If we wanted to break down a body using hydrofluoric acid, this is how one could do that. Get a steady polythemic barrel with a lockable lid. Pour 65% nitric acid HNO3 into the barrel. Add calcium fluoride, lock the lid, and let it react. Thank you for listening, and we hope you learned a little bit about chemistry along the way. Hey, what is it? Fulminated mercury. A little tweak of chemistry.